What's up, YouTube? This is Megan. Welcome back to the Hood Astro Queen to all of our returning subscribers. However, if this is your first time on my channel today, welcome. And be sure to hit that subscribe button on your way in because you know you want to. So today I will be doing a transit reading on the Tulsa, Oklahoma riots, otherwise known as the race riot. Um, I call it a terroristic act. Okay, the terroristic bombings of Tulsa, Oklahoma. And basically, this was an incident where a lot of the white members of the Tulsa, Oklahoma community were envious of the black wealth and affluence that was um, obtained by black individuals in the community. A lot of people even to this day refer to it as uh, the Black Wall Street. So a lot of affluent Black people created their own networks in society, subcultures and communities, economics as well, you know, economic resources and economic app opportunities. And they were robbed of those things. They were killed, slaughtered by the hundreds. To this day, the death toll is unknown. But People estimate anywhere from around uh, 300 black men, women, and children were murdered by bomb, by knife, by gun, by fire. So this was a very catastrophic event. And I was actually watching a documentary on it uh, this past weekend. And everybody knows me, knows I'm a history buff. Like, I love history. I love especially the history that <laughs> encompasses or applies to my people. You know, cancer south note checking in here. So I care very much about these things. Um, yeah, so I thought it would be very interesting to do a transit reading on this incident. And um, I'm going to read an excerpt, a passage for those of you all who are not really familiar with the incident to kind of provide some context as far as what led up to it. What was it and why did it happen? So if you feel like you're too good for that, you can go ahead and skip ahead to the actual reading. But we're going to go ahead and get started, okay? So historian John W. Franklin of the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture explained to the Smithsonian Magazine last year that Black and Native people built wealth after discovering oil near the city in the early 1900s. That wealth anchored Greenwood's thriving Black business district, which placed it among the country's most affluent Black neighborhoods. That's what leads to Greenwood being called the Black Wall Street, said Franklin. It had restaurants, furriers, and jewelry stores, even hotels. The wealth infuriated white residents and business owners, and their anger exploded on May 31st, 1921. According to the Tulsa Historical, Historical Society and Museum, police arrested a black man named Dick Rowland on suspicion that he assaulted Sarah Page, a white woman, in an elevator the previous day. Local newspapers circulated unsubstantiated reports about Rowland allegedly raping Page, and an armed white group confronted a similarly armed black group of World War I veterans outside of the courthouse where the sheriff held Roland. The two sides exchanged shots until the outnumbered black militia initially trying to prevent a lynching had to retreat. White Tulsans then attacked the Greenwood neighborhood for two days. Smithsonian Magazine says the mob destroyed 35 blocks and killed almost 300 black people. Police and the National Guard intervened primarily to put out building fires and arrest blacks, some of whom were taken out of vigilante custody. Franklin says that the white rioters, aided by city government and the National Guard, were deputized and handed weapons to carry out the massacre. But while anger towards Roland may have lit the fuse, Franklin says the riots systematically targeted black wealth. And this very much coincides with what I saw in the documentary as it pointed out that a lot of these people before burning the homes would ransack the place and pocket all of these people's valuables, their jewelry, their belongings, their assets. So literally swiping, stealing these assets, financial assets from people, you know. However, um, Franklin said that 
or he went on to describe that there were private planes commissioned either by the city or white business owners that were used to bomb Greenwood. So we're talking real life like Iraq, like bombs over Baghdad, like people really um, trying to annihilate a community of people. And it's ridiculous. Now, the massacre remained largely ignored until 1997 when Oklahoma state legislator authorized the Oklahoma commission to review the destruction. Um, so yeah, yada, 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 basically a lot of death, chaos, and dissension at the hands of white people. And I want to be very clear too. I love all people um, because at the end of the day, we all are a part of the human race. However, it is very important to me, even with my ivory brothers and sisters, I love my vanilla brothers and sisters. It's very important that you recognize where you came from as well. In the sense that if you are a descendant of European Americans, your ancestors were evil. Okay? Okay. Just admit that and we can we can take the conversation wherever you want to take it. So, <laughs> now that Megan's rant is over, I want to go ahead and get into the reading, okay? So, the Tulsa riots were initiated on May 31st, 1921. I used noon, so 12 p.m. as the placeholder, which is very fitting as far as the time is concerned, uh, which according to my calculations, this riot would have had to start within, like I said, from noon to around three ish PM. But if you guys have any kind of like historical fact that can clarify the actual time of the incident, feel free to drop that in the comment section. However, this was still a very, very fitting um, and seemingly accurate placeholder. So, with that being said, on this day, the sun was at, transiting sun was at the ninth degree of Gemini. And actually, the number nine appears quite frequently in a lot of these planetary placements, which is very interesting because the number nine deals with violence. It deals with weaponry. It deals with um, force, okay? And Gemini deals with the community, your neighborhood, your short distance travels, the things around you, your immediate environment. So you can even look at the sun being at that ninth degree as symbolizing the quite literal destruction of a community. Okay. Um, and this is further reinforced with the sun being conjoined to Mars, transiting Mars. And that definitely reinforces this theme of um, conflict, strife, inner tension within a community but Gemini also governs the media so you can also interpret this to be the weaponization of media which was literally exactly what the article was talking about as it pertains to them perpetuating and creating a lot of unsubstantiated claims about the young black boy allegedly supposedly raping quote-unquote the white woman you know so there's that. Now, the sun is also squaring uh, the transiting Uranus at the time, which is also at the ninth degree of Pisces. So once again, think that number nine uh, associating with violence, force, even destruction. OK, so in this case, this could represent white people at the time lacking boundaries or people feeling entitled revolting against uh what they feel to be um something being taken away from them so even you can even look at that uranus in pisces even though it is a generational planet to put it into context during that time period this was what 40 50 years give or take something of that effect post-slavery a lot of lingering tension still being felt you can even look at pisces as dealing with slavery you know so People rebelling against what they feel, like I said, is rightfully theirs or what they feel is being stripped away from them by having slavery eradicated. Um, but, you know, once again, definitely reinforcing this theme of 
um, chaos, you know, Pisces is chaos, racial chaos. But even uh, you can look at this as victimizing other people because Pisces does deal with victimization, using that entitlement as a justification for the victimization of a particular community. Okay, um, these people could have viewed themselves as vigilantes of justice um, or even viewed this to be even like a, por- of a form of protest in some form, you know, like they were rebelling against a, a new wave of unfamiliar territory. Now, this could also have dealt with erratic actions coming as a result of gossip, but also with the sun forming a sessi square to the north node at the time which was it was in the 25th degree of libra this could point towards where people or communities felt like they had to interfere okay libra is literally the sign of interference feeling like you have to interfere with another community or you can even look at this as where enforcing local justice goes wrong and that's initially what happened as far as people putting the little boy on trial for allegedly raping the white woman and then things kind of going haywire after that okay it could also deal with a group of people ambushing a community Uranus is also forming the Sessi Square to that uh, Libra North Node which could also result in the scapegoating of groups of people okay now the transiting moon was at the 29th degree of Pisces, which is very, very interesting because that number 29 can deal with racial tension. And when placed in the sign of Pisces, particularly the moon in Pisces, this can absolutely reinforce this purveying theme of chaos, racial chaos and confusion. Also, racial victimization. This could also point towards where emotions on that day and behaviors trended towards extremes. It also reinforces this theme of um, people having their homes stolen from. And this is echoed with Moon Square Mercury. Also, also um, it's important to note that Pisces is one of those signs that likes the easy way out. So if they can misplace blame, they will. Like just Pisces as an, an energy signature. So having it placed in the moon at the 29th degree can further reinforce this theme of scapegoating as well, right? Scapegoating other groups of people, races of people. And same thing for, like I said, moon squaring, uh, transitant Mercury at the time, which was at the zero degree of Cancer. It further heightens this theme of um yes emotional very explosive emotional reactions but very self-protectionist and defensive and lacking a lot of rationale um people just acting off of their gut instincts um very almost even primal in nature but then also, like I said, people having their homes just completely destroyed, okay, or and or robbed in a quite literal sense. So also, I wanted to discuss a little bit about this time period that this riot took place in. Now, it did happen in the Pluto Cancer generation, which stems from 1913 to 1938. So people who were born in between the, that time period are Pluto Cancer individuals. But the people who were born during this time period, as well as just the themes that were cultivated, the major themes cultivated within this moment in time, were very much focused and centered around family values the dynamic of the home perfecting quote unquote the dynamic of the home making women the more coveted part of the household specifically white women okay and and so with these themes being very prevalent it also created an incentive to protect these coveted symbols of even patriotism you can even look at that pluto cancer generation as People being very patriotic. So using all of these symbols to tie back into what they feel is, you know, me being an American. I'm an American. I love my country. I love my people. But this could also even manifest in extreme feelings of prejudice 
and racism towards other groups of people who are not part of your tribe. So, you know, hence why a lot of the racial um, aspects and a lot of the racial violence in society came to a head during this era. Not to say that there weren't or didn't take place in any other parts of society. I mean, the 40s, 50s, and 60s were nothing to sneeze at either. And then we have today when that's a completely different video, different story for a different day. But, you know, you do have even a lot of people, and I think this Pluto... Um, cancer generation it might be dead now like everybody might be dead you might find a few people who are born in the late 30s but even with them they do have these very deeply ingrained sense of um race and racial experiences and you know and that's on the black and white side but you know in this generation or during that particular era white people had all of the power Still do, but once again, different video for a different day. Nonetheless, this Pluto gener uh, cancer generation. Also, you can look at that as, like I said, a lot of heightened racial tensions, especially being the freshly post-slavery era, um, power struggles involving race. And like I said, people come into very extreme viewpoints. Now, the transiting Pluto during that day was at the seventh degree. Okay, which right there reinforces this theme of victimization and scapegoating. And it formed a square to Chiron, which was at the 13th degree of Aries. That number 13 deals with death. It also deals with violent transformation. Uh, Chiron and Aries is literal like wounds, you know. So you can even look at this as, once again, the victimization of a race of people shooting black people in the foot committing extreme acts of violence based on race and doing so by way of guns, knives, and bombs, weaponry. All of that is encompassed with that Aries energy, especially Chiron and Aries. People were getting decapitated, okay? That very much is uh, fits in that same vein as Chiron and Aries, as Aries deals with the head. So there's that. Um, you can even look at this configuration is uh, white people willing or exerting force on people of color, excessive use of power and force to protect women, um, white women or the white society, white subset of um, society. You can also look at this as there being knee jerk emotional reactions that led to brutality, flaring tempers and aggressions, the slaughter of a particular race of people. Um, and even once again, reinforcing this theme of destroying people's homes, destroying people's homes. Now, uh, transiting Mercury was conjoined to Pluto at the time, which further exacerbated these racial, these local racial tensions or racism within the community. And it could also point towards the inclination to force ideas and beliefs on other people, um, groupthink people acting off of impulse you can even look at this as that mob mentality where everybody grabs a pitchfork and a, a blowtorch and marches through the streets angry and you know it's literally instinctual like i said before it's sheer emotion people acting off of sheer emotion no type of logic rationale it's all about your biased perspective and what you believe to be true of another group of people who look nothing like you okay Mercury conjoined the Pluto. Uh, the transiting south node was at the 25th degree of Aries, which once again reinforces this ever prevalent theme of violence, impulsions, anger, temper, flaring, and destruction. Okay, lots of fire. Lots and lots of fire. So, yeah, you know, um, this concludes my reading, y'all. It concludes my reading. I am very interested to know what you guys thought of this reading but also what do you think about the incident did you know about it and particularly i want to know what a lot of my vanilla brothers and sisters think about this incident i want to know if you've heard of it before and i'm gonna be honest like i said earlier you know i feel like in order for me to have a, a healthy or anybody to have a healthy dialogue you know, between the races, I think a lot of it is white people accepting and acknowledging the fact that they come from some very evil, disgusting people. 
And I know that might be kind of hard to face because, you know, these people are your grandfathers, grandmothers, great grandmothers, great great grandmothers. Well, big granny, your big granny went shit, probably. Most people. There are exceptions. Um, so yeah, what do y'all think about it? Like, I'm kind of curious. I really want to hear viewpoints outside of my own community. Um, so yeah, y'all drop down in the comment section. Let me know what you thought of this reading and etc. And I love y'all, man. Practice unconditional self-love so that you can love others. And until the next video, I holla.